Hi, Bob Grinier, volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. Okay, what we are looking at in the uh, coming uh, microscope video is uh, the area of the PTFE between this dark area here, this gray, this gray sort of brown into the white and the white zone here. Um, so uh, this is relatively unscathed. Uh, this area has a sort of transition, more of a transition, and then a very dark area. And this is where the Amaza gas flame uh, momentarily uh, contacting the PTFE uh, caused this uh, deposit of whatever this is. Okay, so we're going to start off in the dark area. And as you can see, the structures are fairly close packed. Sometimes they're kind of forming a beehive where they are uh, pressing up against one another. And also there appears to be layers of them. You can see maybe smaller or larger ones underneath. So they've kind of like piled on top of each other. And this is the area of the uh, polytetrafluoroethylene that is uh, most dark uh, without being jet black. And later on we'll go over some areas which are jet black. Uh, you can see some breaks uh, in the structures and uh, we will see these at various parts of the overall uh, area that we examine and I believe that these are kind of like almost like stretch marks as a the uh, PTFE suddenly became flaccid um, during the test uh, it kind of bent over and it almost cracked uh, the structures so these structures um, it would appear therefore immediately or almost instantaneously uh, changed the nature of the surface of the polytetrafluoroethylene. Uh, this is the hypothesis and such that that was uh, locked in place before the uh, material cracked over. Now here you can see an area where the uh, the coating is quite consistent although thinner uh, and uh, you can see here there's uh, some small ones and large ones um, and we're back to the area where we were before and where they are not so closely packed they become uh, more uh, circular but not always um, here there seems to be ones that are smaller uh, here they're less densely packed although again there's a, a layer of finer ones underneath um, but where you see individual ones like the top right hand corner there uh, uh, they're, the, and they're large they seem to have a black spot in the middle uh, also, you will see these kind of trails um, often coming from one of these circles uh, and sp splaying out, almost like a potentially it ran across the surface, depositing a, a sort of shaft uh, or beam of of uh, dark behind it or in front of it. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> now, it, you will see on some of the close-up images that are shared uh, where you have two spots close together. They seem to bridge between each other and you get these almost like arches of uh, black between them. Uh, no, I'm not seeing any here. Um, this is a very sort of a light area of coating, very fine layer of coating. Uh, and we're coming into the darker area again. And again, you can see where <clears throat> it kind of cracked. Here's a new uh, section of recording. Now, where there are all, there is almost no carbon, um, it's it's almost like dimpled and and this uh, I don't know because I haven't got the magnification but these might be much much smaller structures uh, underneath um, because if you go to a very white area you'll see later it's essentially smooth um, so you can see here there's quite a few spots uh, there's that uh, couple down the bottom there that have kind of bridged with the black smear maybe it's two or three um, that have come together um, there's a there's a group of three that have uh, oh, there, there you go. Now these ones are almost like the underside of lily pads in, in the middle left and um, now bottom left. Uh, and you can see there's there's two that have come together and they've got a black arch between them that's gone out of focus now. Now lily pad, pads, and what I call lily pads, um, top left now. Uh, these are fairly large structures uh, tending towards circular when they're uh, on their own um, but also uh, uh, hexagonal or pentagonal. Um, and you can see many of them here and they kind of have these uh, almost like lines going into the center point uh, of the structure. 
So here you can see the big ones are fading out to the little ones. Uh, again, there's that crack. So you can see, you can imagine how it almost a, you know, there's, there's a split one top left there. It's almost like it was there. It modified the surface, and then the material just split, uh, like like almost like a, uh, you know, cellulite uh, kind of image of cellulite. Again, you can see some ones where the lily pad has this black spot in the middle. There again. So we're going over the same area. Here's what appears to me maybe a few that have run over the surface or, or, or one that's gone over, gone over the surface slightly zigzagging. Uh, don't know. Um, like I say, there'll be high resolution images for you to inspect in at your leisure. And here, here you can see uh, we're starting to get to area that's very white. Nope, we're going back again. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, you can see small dimples and then getting towards the the sort of lily pad pads uh, slightly getting darker getting darker uh, darker spots in the middle uh, there's a there's a strange one down the bottom left there don't know what that is uh, it's a bit of an outlier um, now these large flecks of, of carbon they're kind of broken away from the main mass and, and kind of uh, found themselves there. That's actually got a perimeter around it, that one, which is quite interesting. Um, I don't know whether that's a, a common feature. Uh, so yeah, th this is fairly a regular array. Uh, here's some more stretch marks, as I call them. They actually seem to have a ravine in them. Um, so more of the same kind of thing. Now we're going out into the dimpled area and uh, maybe maybe we'll go further towards there. Now you can see some little ones here with a little black center spot. Um, yeah sort of transition between the dimple to the what I call the underside of the lily pads. Um, that transition on the left hand side there. Okay so fine dimples and the dimples are basically gone and you've just got a very very smooth polytetrafluoroethylene sheet surface with some deposit now look at the fine gray one you just missed it back there it had a one of the, one of the lily pads on it and so it kind of like taken the impression and and that piece of carbon had come off and then laid on the very smooth surface it's worth going back to that actually in the video and these are just fragments that have kind of uh, broken off and deposited on the smooth area. Now as we move left here you can see it starts to get dimpled and we go a little bit more and a little bit more and the dimples are getting bigger. Now perhaps this is some feature of PTFE when it's uh, under exposure to this but th there's this sudden demarcation where you start to see the underside of the what I call the lily pads and then as they increase their density uh, they become sort of like a very very dense uh, you can see kind of a zigzag in that what I call a stretch mark there now in the last clip which we're just about to come you see where the carbon is completely covered uh, it just absorbs all of the light uh, which uh, is interesting in its own right um, yeah there you go just where the, that layer of carbon is it's just taking all of the light and this is this is really here is at full brightness now this last section again we're back to the uh, dark area the what I call the honeycomb section um, and if you look at it you can see um, that there are smaller ones underneath filling in the gaps so it was like almost like if these are things that came down onto the surface or went across the surface and aligned themselves with the surface they also um, uh, layered on top of each other. There's your stretch mark into the kind of like more homogeneous area and into the lily pads going into the dimples. There's this kind of like painterly mark that they can sometimes create. It looks like there's a couple joined together there uh, by that painterly mark and the dimples and it's sort of fading out now the uh, coating that's a bridge there with with two lily pads and uh, I've got some good, good images of that uh, more lily pads more lily pads 
Now, the interesting thing is that uh, seeing very similar structures on the Lion Jewel, um, which I will also share, and uh, uh, kind of analogs on the aluminium of John Hutchison. So we're going out into the white, and you can see how the dimples just sort of fade away. Look at that kind of painterly mark, and another larger painterly mark. It's kind of like it leaves this weird kind of trail. And we're back into the dimples. A couple of isolated lily pads. There's one of the painterly marks. It's kind of zigzaggy painterly mark, not zigzaggy but wavy. And here we go. There we go, more lily pads. There's that weird structure we saw earlier. And going back into the dimpled area. So I think you get the idea. Uh, it seems to be a transition where they are very densely packed. You get the uh, deep, thick carbon uh, where they seem to be overlaid, where they're kind of like quite densely packed, but uh, you know, fairly not layered. You get a fine layer of carbon. And then it just kind of gets very, very thin as they kind of, you know, get smaller. Uh, and kind of uh, fade into the kind of smooth uh, 